Howdy folks, welcome to this week's Ag Report. So this week uh, we are continuing our talk about COVID-19 and the effects on the cattle market. Uh, it has some had some dramatic effects here in the last uh, two weeks or so, and uh, it's continually changing. So Today we've got Steve Loftus with us. He is a, an order buyer, been uh, order buying here in Ellis County for 40 some odd years. Uh, Steve, share with us a little unique history about uh, your dad and uh, order buying at the uh, famous Fort Worth Stockyards. Well, uh, after Dad came home from uh, World War II, he went uh, uh, he went to uh, the stockyards and got a job buying for Harmel Packing Company, which was in Dallas at that time. And he worked there till oh, uh, Harmel probably shut down in Dallas in the in the early sixties. And then he went to working for two packing houses in Dallas. Uh, uh, they were independent packing houses. Uh, one was p h Pack in Dallas, and another one was Coffin Made in Coffin. Well, so so a lot, lot of history there. So let's fast forward to today. I, I know this is probably, uh, in your career, one of the most unique situations. Have you seen situations like this before? No, I haven't seen anything exactly like this. We've had some similar things, but they were all droughts or dairy buyouts or something like that that affected the market adversely. Uh, the best one I can think of was just that was a good deal was the um, Atkins diet came along, and there was such a big consumption of red meat in the United States, the packing companies ran out of uh, cattle to process because they were moving them so fast. Which was a good deal, but it was something no one saw coming, and so no one was prepared for it. Right, and so that—that's the key, kind of, with this is—is is the uncertainty, and no one was prepared. So, to talk a little bit about what has happened um, with the shelter in place, you now have, uh, from what I've been told, and, and please uh, insert corrections, uh, is about fifty percent of Americans went outside the home and purchased their breakfast, their lunches, their dinners in the retail restaurant business. And the meat producers just lost 50% of their sales of their premium cut steaks and things like that. And so all of a sudden you had the grocery stores with a huge demand for ground, round, ground beef, things like that. Uh, because of that switch all of a sudden, and you know, as you can, can speak to, Things don't happen instantly. You are buying cattle for you know 120 days down the road most of the time, and it takes a process to get there. Share with us kind of what you've seen in the last two weeks with this huge shift in what has happened to the market. Well, we had uh, we had one one Monday morning. Everyone woke up and thought everything was going to get high, and they went to buying cattle up, and they came to they came to find they they found out pretty quick they could buy all the cattle they wanted if they wanted to pay for them and then it just uh, went downhill from there because we had a glut come in everybody ran their cattle to the market especially the slaughter cows and they they one weekend they were bringing 80 cents the next weekend they brought 60 the next weekend they brought 40 well that's a big shift but then again the uh people that are working in the packing houses, working in the boning rooms, they're not going to work. We can't process this meat. So there's been several places that have just completely quit. Uh, but, you know, and there's no demand for them because we can't, we can't, we can't process it. You don't have a demand. Well, you know, we've got a, we've, we've reached capacity without running over our demand. Uh, you know, we can't process it, but we still have a demand. But if we don't have the manpower to do it, we're, we're in trouble. Right. Very labor-intensive process. And so let me clarify just a little bit. Uh, you know, we, obviously, we're, we're, you are an order buyer. So typically what that would look like for you would be uh, a company, and uh, a, a, a feed yard or something, giving you a, a, a shopping list of animals to purchase. And then you would accumulate those. And when you got the, the list filled, then you would ship them out. What what does that list look like, or has it totally disappeared for you? It's pretty well disappeared in the last week. 
because no one knows what to do and where to turn. Because like you said, it's going to be 120 days from now. We have no clue how it's going to be. Right. So, so for right now, it's it's kind of a holding pattern on, on everybody until we kind of see what uh, people's reactions are after the shelter in places are, are lifted and what their purchasing looks like, whether they're returning to the restaurants for good ribeyes or fillets or whether they're still at home cooking, uh, you know, uh, uh, ground meats and things like that. Right. They'll have, they'll have to be a shift back to that someday. I don't know when that'll be and no one else does either. So no one's going to step out there and buy these calves and, and get them ready to go in the feed yards because we don't know what's going to happen. So uh, quickly for you, um, you know, nobody has the crystal ball. And, of course, that's what, you know, everybody is always asking is what are things, you know, kind of look like. Um, you know, best guess would be if you uh, have producers that, that have some calves that are getting ready to wean, Maybe they have a pretty good uh, uh, supply of grass, maybe some extra hay. Probably best to try and hold on to those things a little bit longer and, and see what, uh, if we can get a glimpse down the road a little bit. What are your thoughts? If they can sell them weighing 450 to 500 pounds, they need to go ahead and sell them. Okay. Yeah, those cattle are buying the same dollars as the seven and eight weight cattle. Oh, and wow. You wind up and have a seven or eight weight calf. He's not worth any more than that 450-pound calf. Gotcha. And a lot more time and, and uh, investment in that 7, 8 weight. Right. You got a lot of risk. Gotcha. Well, Steve, I really appreciate you taking time today and, and talking with us about, you know, what's, what's going on in, in your link. As, as we know, there's several steps to getting food, meats, uh, all into that grocery room shelf or, or into that restaurant and, and you're one of those those steps along the way and I appreciate you sharing with us about uh, what's kind of going on and how things are going with you. Well, you're very welcome. I, I appreciate y'all. Uh, we need If we had more education on what's going on, people, I think, would probably look at us a little bit differently rather than just a, a supplier. That's right. Very, very good point. Very good point. Well, Steve, we, we appreciate it. Y'all take care now.